Tests are enormously helpful. Uh, maybe 20 years ago, not that many people in the industry were doing a whole lot of testing. Uh, there was a concerted effort by people in the Agile community to say, really, you should be testing. It gives you a lot of benefits. Uh, it lets you know that your code is working as expected, which is great. But specifically, they wanted to encourage you to refactor your code, that is, restructure your code that so it would do the same thing, but perhaps have a, a better design. And it turns out having those tests around makes refactoring a lot less stressful because you know that you haven't broken things in the meantime. So when your code has a contract, it is actually easier to test. It turns out that the same kind of thinking that you do in order to create the test is the same kind of thinking you do in order to write the contract. And once the contract is there, it's sort of like a no-op or a mechanical step to actually create the test. But there's another thing which is even more interesting, which is that by going through the thinking process of writing a contract and then saying, actually, maybe that contract is a little bit too complicated, it turns out that simplification of your code is going to make testing easier. Let's take a look. Let's click on the right window so that when I click page down, it does the right thing. Okay, so here's our uh, mem copy example. This is actually from uh, from Linux. Uh, so this is a standard um, uh, method, and it's already got a precondition and postcondition inside there. Uh, the precondition is that the memory areas for source and destination can't overlap, and the postcondition is stated. Uh, it's stated as it copies n bytes from memory area the source over to the destination. And the problem with this is that it's not phrased as a logical post condition, okay? So when we go to test this thing, it's gonna be a little bit harder. Um, and in fact, if I said, hey, would you mind rewriting this post condition uh, in a proper uh, standard logical format? You might say, ah, forget it. So let's just pretend you did that and you, you went straight to testing. So let's see what that would look like. So here's some pseudocode and it basically sets up uh, two different arrays, uh, the source and destination, and then it calls mem copy, and then it asserts that the data in the first one is equal to the data in the second one. Now that's a test for one element. Now, while I'm here, I might as well do a drive-by advocacy here, which is the test generally can be thought of as having three parts, arrange, act, and assert. And so all the tests here, uh, I'm gonna show in that same format. Arranging sets up the conditions. Act, in this case, is the calling of the method that's being tested. And the uh, assert is a one or more assertions about what must be true when you're finished. Okay, so let's take a look at the copying of two elements. Okay, so the only thing uh, that's different here is that we have two elements in the array and we call memcopy with the last parameter being two and we have a second assert statement that says, well, actually we, we already tested for the first uh, element, we need to test for the second one. So let's say we don't wanna do three because three is boring, so let's go ahead and do 10. And you can see this looks very predictable. And uh, in fact, it's so predictable, you're like, that's kind of gross. I don't want to write that code a whole bunch of times because you know what I had to do is I had to like press down arrow and then backspace and then put in another number. And I know that I could accidentally make mistakes with that. So uh, copy and paste, very common problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, look, I'm just gonna write a for loop that summarizes that. And assuming I didn't make any off by one errors, let's let's say that this looks reasonable. It has the same arrange, it has the same action, but the assertion actually loops through uh, the, uh, the 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 source and destination arrays and compares them. Okay, uh, so that's the big idea here: is that we could go ahead and test that uh, method, but when we started to take a look at uh, all the different assertions I'd have to write, I ended up with uh, an assertion that generalizes across uh, n different parts of these arrays. Okay, uh, so let's go and, and reflect on contracts and, contact, contracts and tests. Uh, both of them are a kind of logical thinking. Uh, the tests are true or false, just like contracts, and converting this action verb that we have, which is copy, into contracts is the same kind of thinking as taking a look at a method and writing true or false uh, tests to say whether or not that thing's going to work. Now, I don't want to say that every single, any single test is like a post condition. Instead, it's the general case of all these tests. If I say all these tests uh, satisfy testing for this method, then that good test coverage is the general case. Okay. So let's go back 
uh, and take a look at the method. And let's rewrite the post condition. So it, remember, had the action verb about copying, and we had that test assertion that says that basically looping through source and destination, you're going to find these things to be equal. So I think we can rewrite that as English pretty succinctly. Uh, and the way we would write that is the first n elements starting with destination will equal the first n elements starting at source. Now, uh, it could be that you could be even more clear or more concise about phrasing that, but that seems reasonably clear and it's really not much longer than the, the previous one. Uh, so what I've done here is I've rearranged it to follow the pre and post condition format. Now, uh, obviously it depends what you're used to, but if you're used to seeing pre and post condition things, uh, then looking at this, uh, you, would, you would immediately go, okay, I know exactly what's going on here. I know where the precondition and the postcondition is. But all we did was uh, rearrange things. Okay, let's chat about contracts and test overall uh, and reflect on what we just saw. We applied a contract to a method that previously didn't have one. That wasn't too hard, but the method was pretty well designed. In that case, there really wasn't any extra work. It takes effort to shift from procedure to logic. I grant you that. But if you were going to write a test case, the test case, doing that writing of the test case, forced, forced you to think logically about something that was previously a procedure. So I agree that it takes effort to create test cases. That's exactly the same work that you've got going on when writing the contract. So why not just write the contract if you're already writing the test cases? So what should you test? Obviously, what you should test is what the contract commits this method to. And what you don't want to test is implementation choices because those can change. So for example, if, uh, if the inside of my method happened to use an array, uh, maybe I would like to be able to change that to a linked list uh, or to some other data structure at some point in the future. So it's not that every single thing that's in the implementation should be tested. Instead, you have to figure out what is this method really trying to do and you test just that. And so that's what you're already doing when you're testing. Uh, the difference is when you have a contract, you don't have to guess about what is being committed to and what are the implementation choices that are being reserved. And in practice, that is uh, devilishly difficult. Uh, so for example, um, if, you always, if your method always returns things in a particular order, say because you used a data structure that kept them in order internally in the implementation, are you really committing to that? Because uh, clients of your code may uh, accidentally come to depend on that, and that might not be something that you meant to commit to, okay? Uh, and so you're forced to guess when you write those tests about what, what should, should you test for ordering or not. So testing is hard when there's just an implementation to look at. If you haven't actually put any thought into what am I committing to, whether that commitment is written down as a contract or not, just writing the, the test is gonna be hard. But once you uh, write the contract, once you commit to, I'm committing to this, I'm not committing to that, uh, then writing the test becomes a whole lot easier. In other words, it's another example of, you're gonna have to do that work anyway when you get to the testing, you might as well write it down so everyone that uses your method uh, has uh, visibility in term which, in, into what you decided. So I think it's important for you to see at least two major kinds of tests. Uh, the first kind is unit test. Now you've seen a, a million unit tests in your life. Everybody does unit testing. And so for unit testing, you test a specific case. You basically say, what happens if I fire a number three into this method? Ah, well, I should get out a number nine. And that is consistent with this method squaring the, the number that comes in. Okay, so those are great for specific cases. I want to talk to you about property testing, which is much less common, but pretty important. Property testing is great for invariance. And invariants are things that you say, no matter what I do, I believe that this thing should be true. So here's an example of an invariant. Uh, if you've got a linked list, your invariant might be, no matter what API method you call on this list, there should be no way that I can end up with a cycle in it, okay? And, and you may have designed the code to find that, uh, but property-based testing may, for example, generate a whole bunch of test cases automatically looking for a counterexample. Okay, here's another example of a property test, which isn't with a primitive thing. No matter what API methods you call, you can't create a customer without an address because you always want to be able to contact the customer. No matter what you do in the API, you can't either create one without one or remove uh, an address, uh, leaving, leaving the customer with no address. Okay, so the big idea in testing uh, is that uh, not only will tests give you uh, a bunch of ways of regression testing, of, of, of giving confidence that your code behaves like it did yesterday, 
but also that the act of being forced to write the test will guide you to good designs. This is standard belief in the testing community, okay? Their thought is that if it's easy to test, then it'll be easy for people to use. If it's hard to test, well, you should probably go back and redesign it because uh, the same pain that you're feeling right now of trying to test is gonna be felt by everybody who's trying to call the code. So I think there's something similar going on with contracts here, is that uh, contracts reveal testing smells. Uh, the contracts don't directly uh, influence your design, uh, but they do open your eyes to uh, designs that are not as simple, not as elegant as they were before. And therefore you change the design to make it less uh, ugly uh, and less complicated. So contracts are a force of simplicity and clarity, which then makes it easier to test the code because simple contracts mean simple tests, right? There's fewer edge cases, things are more uniform, uh, just less stuff to have, to, less uh, test code to have to write. So in summary, uh, when your code has a contract, it's easier to test. Thinking uh, about writing a contract and thinking about how what kind of tests I need to write uh, is basically the same thought process. Uh, so my argument is you might as well go ahead and write down the contract, okay, rather than just having the test because that lets a lot of people benefit from it. Uh, the callers can, can see the contract right there. You already did the mental work. If you find that your contracts are messy, that's a kind of code smell and that the actions that you go through, the redesigns that you go through to make your code simpler, uh, to make the contract simpler, will help make your testing easy. So the contracts are really guiding you to better tests and guiding you to better designs.